Hello everyone, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Hi, Shafi, Luis, Zaki. <coughs> someone from the hall. Hi. So uh, thanks everyone. Uh, okay, we, I think we wait until 10, 10 people like this. Then uh, I'll start. Wait some time, skip in. Okay, already 8%. One more, one more. Okay, so I guess uh, we can start. Hi, Miss Daja. All right, so that makes 10 of us. So I think I will just start before wasting any time. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the pressure relief valves, the test and the maintenance, uh, mostly testing of a pressure relief valve. Okay. So basically, uh, the reason for inspecting your PRV is to ensure that it is continuous functioning. So PRV is a very sensitive device, very important device in safeguarding your, your equipment and your plant. So that's why you must always, always uh, inspect. So uh, the PRV shall, shall be tested periodically to ensure that they are free to operate and will operate according to uh, their requirement. So the inspection of relief valve must determine the general and physical operating condition of the device to ensure that uh, they, their performance uh, at a given installation is done. So usually uh, we will do a visual on stream uh, inspection whereby you just see at the plant how, how is the, 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 the PRV and uh, in, in service testing is quite rare. Most of it, um, uh, we, we won't look much into that in this session. Um, and next is you test it at the test bench in uh, uh, for, for the brand new PSV and also shop inspection for overhaul. Usually they will retest the buff. And uh, once you change any spare parts on it, you will test. So, so this is the typical flow. And uh, basically, how do you service your PRV? So basically, first you need to remove from your system. Uh, you need to have a visual, initial visual inspection, whether it is corroded, you have any deterioration of the valve, and also you need to transport to a shop. Whereby uh, this this must be a, a, an an inspection shop. And then you need to test as received what is the set pressure of the valve to check whether if there is any deviation on what it's supposed to be. Uh, you conduct another visual uh, inspection. If you see anything severe, then you need to dismantle, you need to clean. Uh, probably if the seat is deteriorated, you need to change or you can do some lapping services depending on the severity. And, uh, and next you uh, do bench testing. So, if you were to look at uh, the bench testing, we have uh, to focus three tests. Uh, you guys can also focus on the slide uh, because uh, there will be some tips to uh, So, basically, if you were to do bench testing, you will actually do the set pressure test to confirm the set pressure, the, the, the PRV open at the set pressure. This is also known as the pop test. So, apart from that, you will need to do seat tightness test to check whether is there any leakage on the seat and also shell tightness test. Uh, so, all right. So these are the bench testing tests uh, that will be conducted in a typical PRV. So uh, these are, we look into the inspection test and frequency. So the frequency of uh, test and inspection of PRV really depend on the process fluid, the environment, the operation of the system, and uh, uh, therefore only general recommendation can be given. Uh, it is actually very subjective. The inspection frequency should be based on previous inspection history. Uh, if your client uses it, uh, check on it every year, then you should be doing that also. So unless there is a special requirement, so these are some of the uh, recommended 
by AST lah, when when you should when is the frequency if your valve is for steam service uh, it is uh, recommended to do annual for every three years uh, sorry if it's steam service is annual if it's air, air and clean dry gas uh, you can do it every three years uh, then then if it's uh, in combination with rupture disc is uh, every five years there you should put consideration on your rupture disc you should check on that annually so because prp is the second layer of uh, of defense uh, apart from that if uh, is elastomeric seals uh, then you need to do annual so the following items should be taken into consideration to determine the frequency for inspection and test you need to actually consider the operating pressure so if you want to see if the PRV is operating close to set set pressure, you require frequent uh, inspection because there's high cycle on the seat and this, uh, so you need to check it frequently. Yeah? Also, if there are any fluctuation, pressure fluctuation, spikes or mechanical vibration, uh, it is recommended for you to check it more, more than once uh, uh, a year. So if you have some corrosive fluids, uh, uh, Fouling service uh, would be shorter than the inter interval. Also, if you have frequent upset of your plants, uh, this may be you need to have a look at the your PSV line. Uh, so moving on. So for the visual on-stream inspection, you should be periodically performed to ensure the earth is in good condition. So, uh, so it should be the visual should be checked during operation and also uh, uh, during normal. So if you were to see the complete visual inspection should have the following, uh, like number one, you should actually look at the seal. The car seal shall be intact and show no evidence of tempering, meaning to say no one has ever opened this or adjust the set pressure at sight. So that's the first thing that you need to be, look at it. Uh, the test gag is not installed. Uh, usually you use your test gag to test your seat tightness test. So uh, make sure it is not installed. Some uh, We always give this as an additional option of test gag during selling of our PSV. Uh, there is no abnormal seat leakage. Seat leakage, you just check visually if there is any leaking on the valve. Other than that, uh, absence of rust, of corrosion, you need, need to look at the start hook. Usually rust uh, without any coating. If your start hook is not coated, it is usually started. The rust will start at the valve, uh, at, the, at the start hook. Uh, you should also check your drain hole. Ensure that there is no leakage from the bonnet fan for the balance PRV. Uh, if there is, a, it is something coming out from the band, uh, of your van, if it's a balanced PRV, meaning to say there's something wrong with your bellows. Uh, so these are the things that you should take into consideration in checking. So uh, moving on. So uh, before you actually perform a, a pressure test, you should also check the integrity of the external adjustment seals. Check the appearance for any unusual damage, missing or miss, miss pipe parts. If sufficient damage other than unusual condition is de detected, that may pose a safety risk during preliminary testing. So you need to actually really look into the valve thoroughly before doing the set pressure test. Okay. So if let's say you have a brand new PRP testing, let's say you just purchase, so it is recommended to perform bench tests of the PRV before installation. Any set. So, like for us here at the top, if you purchase any of your PRV, we will offer this as an additional test. Uh, most of most of the time, uh, we will retest at our warehouse uh, at our shops. So, uh, this is actually just to reconfirm that the set set pressure is the same. And then sometimes during uh, during transportation, you might have some uh, some movement in there. I mean. And then this is just to actually check whether the set point is reached. So uh, the functional test, uh, the set pressure verification and seat tightness test before installation is also recommended, is what I said earlier. PRV which have not been in service for a long period of time is also recommended 
to do the set, separation test uh, before you put it into operation, just to recheck and reconfirm. Because you know these are very severe equipment, uh, so it is uh, it is it is recommended for you to check before installing. So this test initial and approach. Uh, approach Apart from that, you when you do this test, you also have a service record. You have record that you have done the test. So this in hand will reflect on your schedule maintenance, uh, on your how how do you maintain your plan. So this is a good good practice to actually test. So this is an example of a test report uh, that was done by AST for all the bar. If you guys have any other test builders, we can uh, you, you, you will you will get this. So. All right, it is also this test initiate an appropriate service record. If PRV is, is tested, you may you must also follow the correct testing procedure. So I will share it with you later on. So if you look at this, uh, for bench testing, bench test is performed to determine the set pressure where required to verify the tightness of the PRV as received from the shell. So the, the main key in actually testing this PRV, PSV is that you need to always make sure that it is clean. Uh, so the testing fluids, the bench and the working environment must be clean because you have the seat and the knees uh, there. If you have something wrong, some, some deposits, it will not be uh, sharp as that. It will have a pressure loss. So it must be clean. Foreign materials such as solid particle, moisture, oil or any containment in the test medium will damage the ceiling surface. Like I said earlier, so moving on. So this is a typical, uh, I could say, schematic on uh, if you were to set up a test bench. Firstly, you need to have a test test bench, something to clamp your valve, as you can see on the top photo right, right here. So uh, it is actually to clamp the valve. So in a typical schematic, you will have since we are playing around with gas. So you will have a nitrogen tank here. So this is your PSV. Uh, you will have a flexible hose connected to a, a quick, quick connector. And then you will have your number seven, you will have the, the pressure gauge. You will, you will need to make sure all your gauges are calibrated accordingly before you conduct any test. And uh, it is the pressure measuring system should be positioned as close as possible to the PRP. You need to say your gauge should be placed near to see if there is any fluctuations. So you will you can catch it, catch if there is any fluctuation on your system. So this is a basic schematic on on uh, on how do you set up a test test bench. Okay, moving on. Right. So some of you may ask what medium to use. Uh, so. If you have a pressure relief valve marked with gas or vapor, usually you will test it with air. On the other hand, if it's uh, marked for liquid service, we, we will test it with, with water. How do you know whether your PSV is which medium? Firstly, you look at the process data. You, you can look at your GAD. AST supplied GAD will come with all of this, uh, this detailed explanation. Or you can also look at the calculation sheets. During the bidding stage, quotation stage, they will actually go through the calculation sheets where we have the orifice size, the uh, operating pressure and temperature. So you can check it there to know what medium are you actually working with. Then you can test your valve. So uh, if you were to look at this slide, the test described is carried out on a fully assembled PRP and the most atmospheric back, back pressure condition. This test has the purpose of verifying that the spring has been correctly deflected in order. And in, in, in order to obtain the required cold CDTP. CDTP in this case is the set pressure. So the pressure must be increased. Usually how do you test a pop test is you will increase it up to 90% just to get the pressure to accumulate. And then we will increase every 2%, means 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, until the pop, until the set pressure. Once it reach uh, the set pressure, meaning to say 100%, it will uh, create a pop. So once it pop, you will see that uh, 
uh, you can see that at your outlet, there will be, in this case, if you were to use uh, water as the medium, you can see uh, the water should be moving like this. The one, as you can see in the photo, they said, okay. Uh, so this is the correct, meaning to say the valve is open at the correct set point. Whether or not, if it's wrong, you will do like this, you will become low. You need to say there's something wrong with your set, set point of your valve. Okay. Oh, Miss, Miss uh, God asked me whether they are makan. Uh, and so, okay, we move on. And the uh, seed leakage test. So, beside pop test, you will do seed leakage test and you will have also another one, like a shell test. Basically, it's normal like for the other valves, you have shell and seed. So, for in this case, for the PRV, the seed leakage test should be performed according to API 527. This is our reference. And uh, the seed leakage test is performed with air or nitrogen for safety valve for gas and vapor service. You can use air. So the test pressure in all cases uh, for seed test, since at, at uh, your set pressure, it will open. So we want to see the ceiling properties. So we will only test at 90% of your set pressure whether to see whether it seal or not. So, uh, for example, you will have 0 0.345 bar. Uh, so, you will test it less, 0 0.35, then the set pressure is 3.45. I mean, to say, let's say your set pressure is 3.45, we will set it lower of 0 0.35. 3.45, yeah. So, apart from seed leakage, okay, if you are testing with air, you need to wait for three minutes uh, for the valve, and then uh, you observe for the next one minute and see uh, there shall be no visible leakage if you are testing with air. With this visible leakage, you can see by using a Snoopy, whether you can check at all the seat, uh, you, you will check at the outside, or you can check at your pressure gauge. So if you're testing with water, the outlet body bowl shall be filled with water and after waiting time of one minute, the seed leakage shall be measured. So the leakage rate shall not exceed 10 cm3 per hour, per hour per inch of nominal inlet size, size of valve. So meaning to say if your valve is less than one, your maximum allowable is 10 cm3. So if uh, more than one inch, then you just multiply. Okay, following on for shell tightness test. All right, for shell tightness test, it is actually usually performed by the factory. Uh, why? Because uh, it is tested at the shell rating of your flange. So let's say if you have a three, uh, one, uh, 300 inlet, 150 outlet, you will test at the higher one. But then in this case, for example, I give you a case, if you have 150 pounds, if you were to check and see the, uh, you should, uh, the allowable test pressure is 31 bar, if you were to refer. But what if you have a set pressure of 15 bar? So you have a limitation there, you can't test your, your shell test to be that high. So in this case, we will uh, test it uh, at least at 30 PSI. Eh? or uh, you just put at a certain certain pressure to actually examine. So this is how we do uh, for shell test. Mostly we don't you do really do it uh, in, in, the, in the workshop. So because the manufacturer did it, it's mostly on the casting shell of body. So, uh, all right. Okay, moving on. So, this is just to show you the record and reports uh, of the different buff. This is by the AST. So, if you were to get a quote, if you are looking for valve, this is what we normally supply. I will, I am the person in charge, so I will be quoting you a typical calculation sheet and the GAD. And also, if you have uh, any repair, this is we have a IOM, Station Operation and Maintenance Manual, for your review. So once, let's say, the purchase has been made, so over the course uh, of the order, uh, we will actually, once the valve is ready, I will share with you the mail certificate. 
So usually you will be given a 3.1 set and, and uh, also the, uh, all those test report and also the meal, meal certificate for your review. So it is, so this is the normal uh, order what AST will provide for each of the orders. Okay. So following on, let's say you have your wife, you already purchased. So let's say you want to do some uh, maintenance. So it is important for, for you to actually keep record and generate record as uh, for your administration, especially for any PRV. The objective of keeping record is to make sure that the information needed to ensure the performance always meet the requirement. So for each PRV in service, a complete permanent record should be kept. The record should include specification data continuously accumulating uh, history of inspection. So all of this you need to record so that you know. Over time, sometimes uh, the plant op uh, operate at a higher pressure, so you, so you need to do some adjustment. So it's, it, it is good practice to actually uh, keep all the records so that you know. So this is uh, some of the sample record, lah, if, if you can refer to API 576. So this is some of the record on how you should keep record for your PSV. So even if you're doing maintenance, you can see second photo on the right. So these are some of the uh, records for if you are keeping record for your uh, spare parts for every valve. Uh, so it is important for you to actually record anything that you do with the PSV. <laughs> so when a valve is sent for inspection, let's say you send to a third party shop. So uh, you must make sure that you will get a report for every testing that you do for your record. And uh, you should be as received condition. The report of a pressure relieving device shown below you should fill up the document result. I mean, you should, once you send to a third party, you should at least get a report and you should keep that for your tracking. So, apart from that, um, this is this are quite general, like the shop part may have replaced with a step part. If you replace your step part, you need to actually record whatever that you do. This is for your own nail. So, typically, if you were to uh, send a buff, or repair, they should actually give you a new nameplate uh, that should be surely attached. So on a normal repair nameplate, you should have this 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 kind of uh, things uh, such as the name of the repair organization. You should have uh, a, a new identification number for the repair path. You should have a date of repair, set pressure point the capacity type model. So these are all the things that you need to put in if you send a valve for repair. So this is a good good practice recommended by the manufacturer. So following on, if you have for a test only, they should actually generate a report and uh, they should put a new plate also stating that uh, it has been tested at which date, date of test, what is the set pressure. This is for easy tracking inside because you will do a lot of visual inspection, so you can know, oh, the last time the set point is this much, now it's, it has been changed, so and so on. So, okay, I think we reached to the final part. Uh, too bad for today, there will be no gift. As yesterday, I already pokai, <laughs> and it's spent quite, quite a lot yesterday, so just for your own name, eh, this uh, the question that I managed to compile. Let's do some brainstorm. Name three types of tests that can be tested for a PRV on a bench test. What type of test? Uh, the first one, uh, okay, I think, anyone? Anyone answer? Name the three type of tests for that, that you do normally for bench tests. Okay, I give a tip for the first one uh, probably, since I can't see anyone answering. So it's first is the set pressure test, pop test. 
that is the first one. Uh, what about the second and third? Anyone? Oh, tak ada hadiah. Semua tak nak jawab. Macam ni sekarang. Okay, I believe I have another four more minutes to spare. So, come on, come on, come on, anyone? Guys. The first one is seat tightness test, which is the pop test. If you do bench, what else? It's a normal valve, you do these two tests. Seat tightness test is the second one. Yes. Zaida got it right. What about the last one? Anyone? Come on, come on. You do seat test, what else do you need to do? If a normal valve, you do this like almost every day. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, anyone? The last one is shell tightness test. All right. So I guess that's all for my presentation today. If you guys have any question, you can just drop me an, a DM or you can just email me, sharin at thecom.com. So yeah, I think that's all for me. Uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thank you.